Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive look at the Pearl Nano. Now this is a really great encoding, streaming and recording solution that can be used in a number of different ways, which I'll outline in this video. Just to let you know, Epifan have sent this out for the review. They're not paying me in addition to letting me hold on to the unit if I so choose, nor do they get any creative input into this. So all thoughts about it will be my own. Recently on the channel, I had a chance to compare the Pearl Nano up against the A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro. I actually shot a video about that, but being that these are such vastly different units, it probably wasn't that helpful. So hopefully this will explain exactly what the Pearl Nano can do and you can make up your own mind whether or not you think it's right for your particular situation. What I'm going to do is leave some timestamps in the description below, so if you want to skip ahead or back or forth, you can do that. Now, this primary camera is being recorded directly into the Pearl Nano, so that's the image that you're seeing. I also, thanks to a sense of redundancy, always record on my camera as well, and I'll side-by-side side the difference in the video quality. One of the things I've noticed about the Pearl Nano, the recording quality looks amazing. Now, it's recording at 1080p and my camera is recording at 4K, but thanks to a future firmware upgrade, this is going to support 4K recording and encoding, which I think is a really cool thing. Let's take a look at the front panel going from left to right. We get a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, which I actually tested and it sounds good. We get a full size SD card slot. Yes, I much prefer these over those micro ones. They're just very fiddly a lot of the time, the small ones, so having a full size SD card slot is a winner, and we'll talk more about that a little later. Additionally, we get a built-in display. This is a huge advantage over a lot of other switching systems that don't have a built-in display. You're usually required to run something else externally, so you can see what's going on, but this is built with the intention of being a standalone unit. Once it's set up, it remembers all of your settings, and you can navigate the menu simply by using these buttons on the front of the unit to go through each of the options here and to check all of your inputs and audio levels and so forth. So having something that you can control from the front panel is a big advantage when it comes to a standalone unit. Next to the built-in display, we have our navigation keys. We also have one touch recording and one touch streaming buttons. So you can just push a button once it's set up and you're ready to go. One of the most powerful things about the Pearl Nano is the audio configuration, which I'll give you a rundown of the back panel as well. We get two XLR inputs. I'm currently just using one out of my Rodecaster Pro. Now, if you've got a condenser microphone, you can't just plug it directly in. This doesn't support phantom power, but what it can support is if you've got a mixer or Rodecaster Pro or something like that, you can run straight out of that into the Pearl Nano. I think this is great. And then you can decide how much extra gain you want on the signal if you do need that, as well as offsetting the audio sync. Additionally, if you have a mixer that has RCA connectors, you can use those as well. So that option is built into the back. I haven't seen any other unit with that, at least in my experience. Now we get over to the video features. We get a HDMI in, which is the one that's going directly from my GH5S. We then get this pass through, which is going to my reference monitor behind the screen right here. So I can see exactly what's going on on screen and if my camera is working, all that kind of thing. On the back, we also get an SDI input, which is great. If you've got a higher end video camera, for example, or you might be running a pan tilt zoom camera or PTZ camera, you can use that without any issues whatsoever. So that option's great. It means you can run a far longer length of cable without needing an adapter to get the signal through. So SDI can support far longer stretches of cable than HDMI. Up next, we have our Ethernet cable, and the Pearl Nano also supports power over Ethernet, so that's a really handy function if you don't want to use the provided power supply. And then we also get a HDMI out. When it comes to the USB 3.0 port on the back of the Pearl Nano, a lot of people will ask, hey, can I just plug a dongle in that supports USB 3 to HDMI? No, you can't. You can't do that, unfortunately. It doesn't support a webcam either, but it can support external storage if you want to plug that in, or an audio source. Up next, I'm gonna talk about some of the use cases when it comes to the Pearl Nano. The first way I see this being used is with an external switcher, being that you don't have switching functionality on this like you do with say a four HDMI input device like the RGB Link Mini, for example, or the Live Pro L1 or A10 Mini standard. You can plug this directly into the Pearl Nano and then stream and record at a touch of a button. The Pearl Nano replaces a computer when it comes to encoding. So you don't need to have everything going through the computer, then out to the web, or then being recorded externally in another way. This will handle all of that for you. So if you already have a switcher like this, then you'll be good to go. The second way I can see the Pearl Nano being used is with the SRT contribution. What this essentially means is you can up your live streaming production game by mailing this to someone with a camera, 
and have them contribute in a way that looks very professional and also very secure. Just to let you know though, to get all of that to work in reality requires another piece of hardware and you'll need an SRT receiver somewhere in the middle there to get all of this handled properly and then out to the web. So it does require additional hardware, but this is the first piece of that puzzle. The third way in which this can be used is what they call side by side. Now this is perfect for someone who's doing a presentation in a room, say for example, with a PowerPoint presentation. Thanks to the SDI input on the back, you could be using something like a pan tilt zoom camera for your remote audience to see a mix of the PowerPoint presentation and the host. But the advantage of this unit is if you're in the room watching it live, you can just put whatever you like on the big screen behind the presenter because you don't need to see the person as well, right? So all they'll need to see in the room is that HDMI pass through, which is great for PowerPoint presentations. So you can choose what your audience sees in the room and also what your audience sees either via the local stream or via the web stream. Let's take a look at the back end of the Pearl Nano. So once you've got it on your local network, you can simply use the touch panel on the front here go back a couple of pages and the IP address of the unit will come up. All you need to do then is launch any browser and log into the unit itself. It doesn't require any specialty software, just a browser. Once we log in, we're greeted with this status screen right now. It tells us all our important information regarding the switcher. If we want to see an actual live broadcast, we can simply click on this link right here and that will show exactly what's being captured right now. So I think this is fantastic and the quality of it looks spectacular on screen as well. It's not just my shirt. I gotta get a new shirt. <laughs> Under channel, we get all of these different options which include layout, encoding, metadata, streaming, and recording. So for example, if you wanna add something to the layout right now, whether that's an audio input that we want active, we can select it down the bottom. Now, if we go over to add new item, for example, and go to picture, we can add a picture which I added this YouTube logo before and then we can dynamically resize this within the space. Now, once this is set and I click apply down the bottom here, or save, that will be good to go. And we should see that pop up on this main shot right here, which I'm gonna show you via my computer. That's what the audience will see. So we can dynamically change things on the fly. I think this is really great. Say for example, we don't want that image anymore or we wanna resize it. We can resize it using these controls here or we can simply just hit the X and it will disappear. I love how this works. And once you add an image in once, it will be able to be found a whole lot easier again a second time, just by clicking the add new item, and then going to picture, it will appear in this drop down menu. One of the best things about this is thanks to the encoding menu, we can choose whether or not we want high, main or baseline when it comes to the encoding quality. I just leave mine set to high. The Pearl Nano can support a lot of different streaming protocols and it can also support multiple streaming. So if you wanna add a new stream, you can select it from this drop down menu from the streaming tab, RTMP push. And then we can add whatever the details we like. So if you wanna to stream to Facebook or YouTube, we'll put all of our details in this drop down right here. And then we can add another stream at the same time as well, which makes this far more powerful than a lot of other units out there. Now, this will be heavily dependent on your bandwidth. So if you're on ADSL, for example, you probably won't want to stream to multiple networks at the same time, unless you use somewhere in the middle to distribute that. But if you've got good quality upload speed at home or in your office or wherever you're using this unit, multiple streaming is why you would want to buy this one touch of a button once it's configured and you're good to go. I'm actually going to do a test with this coming up on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Now, if we take a look at the recording option, this is where this unit is really cool. So as you can see, I've been recording for 16 minutes here on this particular clip. And down the bottom are all of the other clips that I've already recorded to the SD card that's built into the unit. So to download these, I just click on the download tab or I can play them back and watch them on my computer. So this is great. Does it all via the network as well. Now, just keep into consideration if your laptop is on Wi-Fi and the Pearl Nano is over Ethernet, you probably want to get onto a computer that's also via Ethernet just to speed that download process up. You can't just take the card out and plonk it in your computer. It won't work. You do everything remotely via the back end. Now, when it comes to the HDMI output, you have options here that you can configure to show the audio meters on screen if you so choose, thanks to this over here. And you can select where you want it on screen as well as being able to select your resolution or just have it as the same as source. Now, my source for this particular camera is 4K or UHD, and this will support that at some point. But right now I've just manually selected it as 
1920 by 1080. As I've said a number of times, the Pearl Nano is extremely powerful and this particular section under configuration separates it from just about everything else. Now, I'm gonna link up to the official Epifan video up here for more information about this particular section because I believe it's already been covered, but I'll give you a quick overview of some of the stuff that I think stands out. So firstly, we get full FTP file upload access as well. So basically this will allow us to send whatever we record or stream to an FTP server at the end. I think this is great and it saves the hassle of having to do that manually every single time. So that's really cool. We can also access the Pearl Nano via the Epifan Cloud, which is a service that they offer as well. So you can be anywhere in the world and access the unit. I think that's pretty great. Next, we have content management system integration as well. And this only supports Cultura and Panopo. Now I've set up probably 15 different content management systems over the years. I've not used those two at all. So I have no experience with that. We also have the option to format the SD card either by using the browser or via the hardware unit itself. If you wanna share your video via UPnP, you can set up the server name and information using the option on the left. Another great feature is the media pool, which allows you to see all the different images and so forth that you've uploaded to the unit itself, which is great. As you can see, I only have two, which is the standard JPEG. I'll click on it to show you what it is. That's the background. And then I also have this, which is the YouTube image that I ripped offline or online, online. <laughs> When it comes to the firmware update procedure, it was nice and simple. Once I registered the unit, I had access to the new firmware and it installed without any problems whatsoever. So lastly, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience using this and whether or not I'm gonna hold onto it. But firstly, a massive thank you to Epifan for sending out the Pearl Nano for this particular review. I'm gonna talk about some of my experience using this from a usability perspective. Now, I've been in IT for years, right? And from my own experience, live streaming for a number of years, this is extremely powerful. One of the best things about it will be that 4K support when that shows up. Being able to stream without needing a computer in 4K is gonna be killer. So whenever that turns up, I'm gonna be buying that upgrade because it is a paid upgrade. But if you just wanna stream up to 1080p 60, this is a really powerful unit. I don't think it will replace the A10 Mini or any of those switches, but it will work in combination with any switcher that you just wanna have an encoder for. So this is a really great way of taking your computer out of the equation and having a dedicated piece of hardware. Now, these are quite expensive, but I really feel like thanks to all of what it offers, it's worth it because you get so much out of this unit as well as a little built-in reference screen, which I think is invaluable in the right type of situation. So for what I do in this room, I love it. And I've been using it for the last few months on this channel to record different signal sends. And that's its strength. The internal recording and streaming or slash encoding is why you would wanna buy one of these. While a lot of content creators like myself will never use the FTP option or the content management system integration, if you're in a more corporate environment or somewhere that really requires that, you can have that set up for a great sense of redundancy. So overall, this is a really powerful unit. It's still very different to a switcher. So if you're wondering, should you get a switcher like this or the Pearl Nano? The answer is yes, because they both do different things, right? So you get this, you can plug it into the Pearl Nano and have that as a dedicated encoder and recorder, but it won't replace something like a conventional switcher like the ATEM or the ATEM Mini Pro. It's just something different. So if this ticks a lot of the boxes that you're looking for, I can highly recommend checking it out. But it does have, in my opinion, more of a learning curve than any of the switches I've had a chance to use. But that said, after a few days of using it, you get very comfortable with the back end. And that browser interface is definitely a really cool addition. It means you don't need to continually update software as new software becomes available. It just works. <laughs> I really like that. So let me know what you think of the Pearl Nano. Thanks again for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Catch you soon. See ya.